Okay, here we're going to discuss a little bit that is often debated of should I be using chemical fertilizers or should I be using organic fertilizers. So my goal is to try to give you a background about a little bit of what defines each and to give you this that uh, appreciation for when it might be best to use one or another. So first off, chemical fertilizers. I put those in quotes here because all nutrients come down to chemistry. Uh, but chemical fertilizers is typically what's referring to a manufactured product, a man-made, man-created uh, product, uh, versus organic is tends to refer to something that naturally occurs. So within those chemical fertilizers are often water-soluble, so if you add them to water, they'll kind of diffuse through and mix very well. This makes, uh, because they mix so well, this makes the application process very easy. This form is very friendly to a variety of irrigation methods. You can use them in hydroponic setups, you can drip irrigation, systems that use a water tank as a reservoir, overhead, for example. All of these uh, irrigation methods are applicable for most chemical water-soluble uh, fertilizers. Now, with the ease of application, this can help a grower maintain a very clean operation. Uh, so usually in a bag, you can take a spoonful, take an exact amount out, and keep everything nice and clean and neat. Growers can also precisely, what's called spoon feeding additions, where they're taking the exact amount, very small amount here, and exactly adding it to the hopefully happy plants. However, caution must be taken not to overapply these fertilizers, which increases the odds of burning the plants. So chemical fertilizers, because they're easy to be added, sometimes can be overadded, and as a result, there's a chance a grower could burn their plants if they don't follow uh, the right ratios and the right feeding regimen. Now, in contrast to that, organic fertilizers are not manufactured. They're typically found in nature in one form or another. They're considered to be natural fertilizers, such as seaweed, manure, um, worm castings, bone meal, blood meal. There's a whole bunch of, of variety. But they're typically thought of as occurring naturally in nature, and that's what gets the term organic. The nutrients release is typically a slower release than those chemical-based fertilizers, and the applications can be more limiting. And it can be very difficult, for example, to spread manure, can't necessarily run that through um, some irrigation systems. It could clog drip tapes. Uh, it could be, you know, cause a odor to develop in reservoirs. So again, as a result, it would be more limiting. However, it is still possible to over add and create toxic conditions to your soil and plants, especially with some manures. Manures looking at phosphorus in, in particular. Um, while it is organic and natural, uh, over application can still lead to toxic conditions for some nutrients. So keep in mind, just because you're using organic fertilizers doesn't mean it's free range and you can do no harm. Now for organic fertilizers, the term organic has many definitions and some actually contradict one another. So the scientific definition of organic are compounds con uh, containing carbon. That's kind of the central point of organic means carbon, such as organic chemistry. A misleading definition is like organic farming and it's produced without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or or other artificial agents. So organic does not mean no spray. And I want to get that point kind of across that if you're buying something that's organically produced, it doesn't mean it wasn't sprayed with anything. It means typically uh, the items it could have been sprayed with come from a limited list. Now that limited list, most or organic growers are using kind of OMRI, you may have heard of that term. It stands for the Organic Materials Review Institute. And they have a list of over 5,500 products approved for organic production based on the USDA National Organic Program Standards. Sometimes you see this USDA Organic Seal. 189 results contain some copper base to them. So of this 5,500 list of um, potential products, almost 190 of them contain some sort of copper base. Uh, copper can accumulate in the environment and does not contain carbon. So you have to be mindful of whatever um, situation or whatever kind of definition you're using. While OMRI is considered by many to be the gold standard, um, it does contain products such as those can, that contain copper that can potentially harm the environment. You just want to be mindful of and understand all about the nutrients and all about the products that you have access to and utilize them where they're best used, but realize just because it's organic doesn't mean you can't over add to the environment or cause potential toxicity issues. The organic uh, material breakdown with many organic materials, especially manures, the goal is to use them after a sufficient composting process. Fresh manures can easily burn plants. These are called like hot manures, hot nitrogen. Also under organic standards, there's often a required number of days from manure application to harvest of any crop. So this means you can't apply manure and then go harvest that field. There can be 120 days, 180 days 
um, restriction from when you first apply that manure to when you can harvest off that field. You want to know your source of material also. And if you do get it fresh, be sure to compost it properly or be sure the source is following a composting procedure. Here they're nice, they're turning their compost. Here it's kind of a stagnant pile coming out of a barn. So just kind of know your source, not only what type of manure it is, but how it's being treated before it comes to, to your operation. Organically grown cannabis, this is kind of something that anecdotally growers have reported. If it's organically grown, there's improved taste, there's improved aromas. Uh, compared to a cannabis plant that may have been treated with chemical fertilizer. So while this hasn't really been scientifically proven that there's a true difference between organically grown and chemically grown, the difference could be in part due to the overall grower practices and not solely based on the type of fertilizer used. So keep in mind that there's more at play than just saying, oh, I use organic fertilizer, I use chemical fertilizer, because even organic fertilizer, what you're adding are kind of chemical components. So be mindful of maybe other growing practices uh, because there's been no scientific uh, proof, at least to this point, that organically grown cannabis will produce any different aromas than a chemically produced one. So keep in mind that the grower practices uh, can also influence the plant production.